You would think with the Walt Disney Company shareholders call out of the way, there would be less to talk about with the Walt Disney Company. But instead, our friends at Film Threat have been doing an amazing series exposing what is going on at Walt Disney Animation, and it needs to be shown. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, wherever you are. Welcome to That Park Place. I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter, well, for That Park Place. Here with me is Avash Guy, my Wookiee po co-pilot, and uh, also a special guest, Mr. Alan Ng. Alan, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for um, having me. Uh, exciting week. <laughs> yes, it is. It's been, it's I'm, been I'm, insane. I, I know. I'm I'm here only to add a little bit more to the Disney saga this week. Oh, please do, and and the, I've I've been looking forward to uh, the D files ever since you announced them, and uh, obviously when you first dropped the news of of Wish, this all started with you going out and doing a review of Wish as a Disney fan. You're not just a film reviewer, but you are a Disney diehard. I would I would describe, or maybe I need to describe you as a former. Disney diehard. Uh, where, where are you on that these days? Well, uh, yeah, I haven't been to the park since uh, since the pandemic. I uh, haven't spent a whole lot of money on Disney. Uh, the, the only thing I can say is uh, my daughter wants to go to Goofy's Kitchen in a month. And so we're going to do that. That's pretty much all we've really done with Disney so far. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, believe me, I me spend thousands of dollars uh, every year on on Disney. And uh, they're saving me a lot of money. <laughs> oh, my. And I, I'm hearing a lot of reports of uh, people in that situation. Uh, but I know that I took a special trip to Epcot in maybe it was 2021. And uh, I got favored to a lot of walls. And uh, I wasn't quite pleased with it. But let's talk about uh, your story here out of uh, Film Threat. Uh, Alan Ng here. Disney's Animation Studios Slow Descent to Obscurity. Um, I, I, we don't need to recap each individual uh, segment right. of uh, the D files, but uh, talking about the firing of John Lasseter, the situation there and the witch hunts that were going on within Walt Disney animation. Uh, I highly recommend you go and check out each individual one strange world. Probably. I, would you say that strange world was the first film that was 100% uh, Jennifer Lee? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you, you could call it her rookie film uh, in a way, uh, in terms of her being solely in charge of it. Uh, and then Wish being the uh, the the milestone movie uh, of 100 years of right. Walt Disney animation. And what you've beautifully laid out through the series of D-Files is that this capture by Lee has been an ongoing process ever since uh, Lasseter was thrust out of the company. And so it's it's all this kind of culmination of power and really putting into place her vision for mm -hmm. uh, Disney feature animation going forward here. I think it's really profound to understanding what actually happened with Wish and what 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 uh, what really were the foundational building blocks of such a uh, mm -hmm. troubled production. Yeah. Mm hmm. Absolutely. This is. Uh, yeah, no, I'll just say that uh, again, you, you mentioned it, but uh, when we, when I saw Wish at our early screening, um, I, I knew right away it was the worst Disney animated feature in its 100 year history. Agreed. And uh, and when I made the videos basically going over screenshots of of it, um, you know, that's when animators and artists at Disney started to reach out to me. And uh, and that's how this entire story unfolded. And uh, it, it, in a way, this is the culmination of it all. Uh, and, and what you have said in this article about it, it, it really, really shocked me. But, but, but before we get to the thing that I, 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 I struggle to comprehend how Disney would go so far and, and do what they did on this. Uh, let, let, let's read at least this first paragraph here from the body section. With, with Wish, Lee's hand-selected animators, artists, writers, and musicians were now in place. No excuses for failure. When asked about Jennifer Lee, many former Disney artists spoke about Lee's management style, especially regarding how she formed her teams. Many felt that when she took over to replace John Lasseter, her goal was to clean house of Lasseter loyalists. They felt that ultimately you were either with Lee or against Lee in her mind. Uh, Alan, would, uh, with, with your sources here, is, was this talent-based or was this strictly social standing? This was, uh, it was in a sense, both. Uh, I mean, this was, this was a, 
oh, I don't want to get into too much detail, but just suffice it to say, someone who would have uh, had uh, interactions with her on a on an ongoing basis. Uh, you know, I can't really reveal at what level, but uh, you know, they there was definitely a sense that uh, that Lee didn't like this person, and uh, and she was very passive aggressive about that. And um, and ultimately that led to this person's removal from from the project they were working on. So is this a situation you're uh, describing here? I won't say the word, um, but uh, describing Lee as very cunning and conducting herself with those on her, uh, let's say, blacklist. If you should yeah. if I'm even allowed to use that word anymore, if you would get a conversation, sorry, if you could get a conversation in with her, she would nod and acknowledge you. And then end the conversation quickly. And then in a typically passive aggressive move, she would have you taken off the project for being a problem. This happened to many veteran talents who dared to express their opinion, particularly in matters of how things used to be. Ouch. My heart sinks for the people who were at this company for a very long time. Because so, mm -hmm. Disney is not one of those contractor companies, or at least has not been one of those contractor <laughs> companies uh, that, that the whole industry seems to be pointing towards now. Uh, yeah. Can you, I, I know that you can't really, I, I don't want you to say anything that would endanger your people. Can you give us a, a range at all? Like, are we talking five years plus? Are we talking 10 years plus? Are we talking Disney lifers here? Uh, I would say all of the above. Uh, I mean, look, when, um, uh, you know, we, I don't know if you are familiar with Mark Hen's retirement, but I, uh, I on, am. Yeah, on on the podcast, oh, was it uh, Bank Bancroft Brothers? I believe that's the Bancroft Brothers. Um, he Mark Hen talks about his interactions with Jennifer Lee, and I, I'll be fair to say that you know the soon to be uh, Disney legend um, is it does not want to burn bridges. So I think he was very polite in what he said on it. But but the impression he got was that uh, when asked about. When, when he gave comments and, and ideas and advice for the star character in Wish, um, you know, he was, you know, it was basically he got the nod from Jennifer Lee. Uh, Thank you for your advice. But no, we have a direction we're going to go. And it, if you listen to that podcast, it, it sounds like that was the moment he realized that uh, his talents, his 2D experience, uh, 2D animation experience was no longer needed. And I believe that's what prompted his retirement. It sounded to which me, is, which is an amazing. Sorry, go ahead, Vash, and then I got something. Oh, you got it. Uh, uh, it sounded to me when listening to that Mark uh, that 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 interview there that was mm -hmm. so uh, revelatory for many, and really, you know, uh, was 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 very instructive in, in kind of pulling back the curtain on what was going on yeah. uh, at the animation studio. It sounded to me like he was like, I would have been on longer had yeah. these things not been uh not not been ushered in mm -hmm. uh, seemingly by jennifer lee and i think alan that's the brilliant uh par part about the files you know lending that uh, uh that, yeah. that, that in instruction there uh, jonas go ahead when i when i think about that mark hen situation uh you you have somebody who is who is advising on it on a character that i'm gonna say that asha and i have to struggle to remember her name uh, <laughs> yeah. even because this this movie is so bland and and ultimately forgettable it's it's it, it reads like a draft that really needs help which is unfortunately pretty standard for for everything that the Walt Disney mm -hmm. Company is doing right now the Marvels comes to mind uh, Asha is is purple on purple and her braids are they don't animate well uh, I, again I don't have a problem with braids uh, per se she's just kind of there there's nothing that yeah. i could say Inspired. about her personality other than that she has a job in the in the role and that that job is is activist um there was a there was a a, a a technique that was used in the red letter media um videos about uh, star wars the phantom menace and it was uh describe any of these characters without describing their job and if you go with the original trilogy characters you had an easy time okay well han solo he's a rogue he's a natural leader but defies uh, his job as a natural leader and kind of tries to gravitate away from that in order to live his own life. Whereas, you know, uh, Padme Amidala, uh, uh, vaguely sad, I guess. And, you know, we've had, we've had many years to come up with that. She is, uh, dedicated to politics, I suppose. But, uh, at the time people struggled to define who she is. And I, I, I could not name a character other than Magnifico who they wanted to make evil. 
<laughs> yeah, probably the so, strongest character in the entire entire production here. So, so um, let me speak to this. Let, let me speak to this. Um, I because I, I the the files. This one I wanted to focus on art and animation, but I could have easily gone into story and music. Um, when I went to that press event, uh, uh, Ariana DeBose was there. Uh, the directors mm -hmm. of Fawn Vera Sunthorn and Chris Buck were there, uh, along with the the composer. And they specifically said from the words, uh, from the mouths of the directors, that Asha was an activist. That was her character. And Ariana DeBose goes on to say, yes, I, I love the fact that she steps into her power. Uh, that this is this is from the directors of Wish. So when you oh say my. she was an activist, it was intentional. That was the word they were looking for. I I worry so much about the state of a company that that pulls to this idea more than more than anything else. I call back to Mulan, the live action remake of Mulan, and we have these plots where it's again stepping into her power. Uh, that Mulan finds out that uh, she is being oppressed by the world around her in some kind of psychological way, a world that is telling her not to be who she really is, and who she is is very a very powerful person. Or I could overlay that entire motif onto Captain Marvel who is yet another person who is very powerful and the world is telling her not to be that. And she just yeah. needs to, again, step into her power. And and I'm, I'm sure we could continue on with this idea. And this this fascination with power, um, well, I'll just say it bugs me for one, but it, it's very, to me, it's it's very political uh, in, a, in kind of a political undertone sort of situation. And of course, uh, we see from the previews of The Acolyte that that, that classic line, now iconic line it's not about power it's about who is allowed to wield it oh it's not uh, about sorry, it's not about evil. good or evil yeah um i i just i see so much of this strange i don't know arrogant view about who is in charge being more important than how we live our lives and who is good or evil um in, in fact you could say that maybe magnifico is not evil until after um, after Asha kind of declares some kind of conflict with him. Mm -hmm. This movie is, it, it's just so strange. Vash, it looks like you have something to say. Oh, no, I was, I was going to say that if, if, you, if you are living, uh, if you have set up this idea that she's an activist and then she's coming into her power, think about the creative decisions you have to make in order to foster that idea, in order to maintain that idea, that expression. Well, she can't be necessarily vulnerable. She has no love interest. You know, she, you do all of these things in order to preserve uh, that idea that, uh, that you have of this person. And that's, I think, where this, what Jonas is speaking to, this kind of nihilistic uh, point of view where it's like, well, these, these villains, they're not necessarily so bad. You know, they have their own motivations and, and they, 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 you know, they feel that they're the heroes of their own story. And it, it, it pulls away from these uh, ideas that these, these storytelling concepts that have unified humanity for so long, these, these, uh, these uh, ideas or concepts that you, that everybody innately resonates to. You know, this is a very Southern California idea that doesn't necessarily res resonate with the rest of the world, even though they attempt to input diversity uh, in an attempt to do that. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes against basic storytelling, storytelling that, right. that we've come to come to accept for, for centuries. And it's the idea of, you know, there is a goal out there that you want to, reach uh, a place you want to become person you want to become but you have a personal weakness that prevents you from reaching that ultimate goal or and or you have a villain that is working against your weakness uh to reach your goal and in the course of the story you manage to overcome that weakness and then reach that goal and what that does is that inspires us as the reader to say hey i can relate to this character and because that character was able to reach their goal, I'm able to reach that goal. Uh, it, but now it's, you know, it's activism, it's power. Um, right, right. It, it essentially robs the hero of the hero's journey. Instead, it is the journey in the opposite direction of the mm -hmm. environment, which is silly, that's boring. And, and I think that kind of shows in the ticket sales and the progression it, of people getting bored with it. Yeah, it's that idea of adversity builds character. Um, you know, we, we are constantly growing and constantly maturing in life. 
And it is through movies, stories, books, uh, even songs that that encourages us to say we can be better than we are. Um, but yeah. now it's it, it is that, uh, you know, oh, you're perfect the way you are. You know, your obstacle is the person that doesn't like you or wants to hold you down. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Which is and, ironically uh, making it, it, a flat character in absolutely. a very flat film. Oh, well, oh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. This is the perfect transition, Bash. I'm so glad you said this because <laughs> while we're talking about the problems with the environment, let's talk about the environment in which uh, Wish exists. When discussing the new inexperienced talent being ushered into Disney animation, I said that this inexperience showed and Wish's art style and direction reflected that. It turns out that many insiders within the production said that the amateurish look of Wish came directly from the top, that being Jennifer Lee. And it was intentional. Facts that would be backed up in the making of documentary coming on the Wish DVDs and Blu-rays. Oh, no, I'm going to have to get that, aren't I? <laughs> With decrees coming from the top, they told artists and animators that Wish was going to be a 2D animated feature created with 3D technology. So look so, at that picture. Uh, and tell me that that doesn't it doesn't feel like that oh boy it, uh, i was trying I mean, to get the making it, of blu-ray for this by the way i could i couldn't get it in time it's, but, uh, uh, it's um it's on youtube somewhere oh <laughs> uh, Jonas, go I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm sure i'm sure that it is at this point yeah. so this this idea of everything being flat and lacking depth that was that was on purpose yep i mean look at this uh, this image should scream depth well, uh, I mean, if it, okay, I'll just say this. If this was a YouTube thumbnail, I would send this back. Uh, okay. and, and we have great thumbnail artists. Okay. Uh, and, and the guy who does a majority of our thumbnails is, is very thin-skinned. So uh, okay. I'm joking, it's let, me. Let, um, me. let me blow but, your but, mind here for a second. But where did I get this image? This image comes from the press pack that Disney sent to all media to use to promote Wish. So I didn't screenshot this. They gave me this image. Disney did. So the, so on, on that note, you would assume that when they were sending out something for promotional materials, they would have taken some of the better looking shots in the entire film. The most, uh, it, again, it is a visual medium, medium and it has been a visual mm -hmm. medium for 100 years that they would know. The animators would know, oh, this is the one shot of all the shots in the film. Like Beauty and the Beast with yeah. it yellow dress contrasted with the blue and yellow uh beast uh mm -hmm. costume in that giant um uh, 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 ballroom there that would be the shot that they would want to use to advertise the film and you can probably think of one of those for each individual one of those what is it where are you what are you, like 65 of these now there is one of those that everyone would say yeah that's the one that's the one you send out yeah. this is the one that they sent out yeah i mean they sent out I, 20 uh 12 to 20 i, I believe uh, but okay. you know, I'm looking for I'm looking for examples to show that you know a that they're proud of this image, and that this is a reflection of the decisions they've made. And that's the thing: the decisions they made to achieve the look for Wish. I mean, uh, Jonas has a brilliant example in the in that kind of ballroom scene from Beating the Beating the Beast, and we know that that was a mixture of the Caps technology that they had just invested in at that point, and then 3D technology to really create that. Mm -hmm. gorgeous cinematic look for uh, that sequence right there. Very, very technical uh, back in the day, for sure. But you talk about, Alan, in this article, how they wanted to uh, go with, like, static Im uh, cameras mm -hmm. and, 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 and shots and very flat backgrounds. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the use of focus was very off. Could you describe that and just what yeah. the concept of that was? Well, <laughs> let, me, let me just state this. Um, a week ago, uh, I was getting emails from Disney animators who worked on Wish, and they basically said that uh, I go, why did it look so bad? And and they basically told me that they know, and that when they tried to point things out, point the idea of depth and uh, stuff we'll talk about, um, they were shut down. Said no, the art style had already been decided, um, and they knew at that point there was no changing, and that uh, there's no point in bringing up any more criticism. They were going to do what they were oh told my. to do. Yeah. So that when you watch, so familiar to me. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Please so, finish. Yeah. So when you watch the making of a uh, documentary on the DVD, um, the, the idea, look, uh, I will say this. Um, Jennifer Lee is not exactly, uh, I wouldn't necessarily describe her as an evil person. 
I would more describe her as someone who's a, a exceptional writer who wrote Frozen, um, who is not prepared to run an animation studio. That's probably the best thing I could say about her. Um, so the idea here was when when the art when production began, uh, Chris Buck um, decided to take all the Disney classics from the very beginning, post them up on a on a wall. Yeah. And by the way, there's a specific movie that we haven't seen for a long time. It was on that wall. So someone's going to get fired. Oh, my. <laughs> really? Um, Did it make yeah, it into the film? I have I have the screenshot to show it. Um, oh, that's but uh, but so, I mean, the point was, you know, we, we want to this is the homage to Walt Disney. We're going to study the classic and we're going to we're going to do it. And. The, the problem was is that Walt Disney was forced to use 2D animation because that's all that was available then, which begs the question, well, why didn't you just do, why didn't you just hand draw it? And no, they decided to recreate 2D animation using 3D technology. Problem is they didn't know how to, they didn't know how to do it and you saw it there. And so what they did was when you, when you look at depth of field in, in that image with Asha there, it, it is intentionally made to look flat because that's how Walt Disney would have done it. Um, I, I, I would submit Walt Disney could have done this um, and would have done it better. You know, uh, yes, the, yes. I mean, I mean, you think about the multi-plane camera right. and that, that tower mm -hmm. of, of technology. I mean, it's a monstrosity when you right. look at that thing from, from outside and, and the Re reluctant dragon. Right. I think the reluctant dragon is on Disney plus. I'm not, right. I'm not sure if that uh, maybe so, not on the four kids section because not everything I mean, is there, but, but I think that, the well, let me camera let me explain. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I just want to explain oh, go, go. how they the 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 theory of depth in this picture. What they said was, in order to create depth, what you have to do is show less detail in the background and more detail in the foreground. That's why that bubble in the in the front there uh, looks very detailed. But when you go in the back, they're like fuzzy circles. Uh, even the even oh the my. backgrounds, even the backgrounds, the 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 stained glass window up in the back, no detail whatsoever, and and so by creating a variation of detail, uh, degrees of detail from the background to the foreground, that's how they surmise Walt Disney would have would have done this. And it's I, it's all there in the DVD. They explain it. it I'm so struggling to comprehend what you just said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, it is, it is. I this is am, mind okay. So, uh, so, I'll, I'll give so you one more example. Lack of detail into that farthest pane. Please yeah. go ahead. Please. Okay, I'll give you one more example. When you go and watch Wish, there are crowd scenes. the The mm -hmm. people in the back of the crowd have no faces. The people in the front <laughs> of the crowd have faces. That was intentional. Uh, which one were they referencing there? Are we are we referencing Cinderella and the fact that they were were brushed on the animation and so Cinderella had no toes when she gets out of bed? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Okay, okay, yeah. oh, okay. The the line work around these characters and the judder. What what yeah. is up with that? <laughs> that that I that so oh. bothered me while watching this film. You have no idea, and a lot of people yeah. actually said that online. What's going on there? Again, that was intentional. <laughs> okay, so let's talk it. So if you look at Asha there, it's line drawn. Yeah, her nose, you can see the mm -hmm. lines around it. The, her, her, her face, there's a black line around there. So here's the thing. So uh, when you grow older, you get more wrinkles. And so therefore, your lines are darker. But when you're young, you're, you, you know, your face is smooth, you know, your skin is smooth. And so the lines are less, uh, less pronounced. So when you watch the making of DVD, they will point this out that Asha, her lines are softened and more gray like while her father are her, her his lines are very dark and very bold and very oh wide. And again, <laughs> these were intentional decisions again. And again, uh, yeah, okay. Well, the, this, the father this is, is a more say, striking design, I would say, yeah. than Asha. But, oh, but not by, but by not by much, though. The father is is a more striking design than Asha, but not by much. But it's because they put more expression on him. And he's not a standard uh, princess form. Um, yeah. I mean, this is I mean, this is a matter of inches that we're talking here. Yeah, I, I mean, look at look at Asha's it. face um, herself. This is to me, Asha's face is very standard when it comes to how you draw a female face. 
Uh, there's nothing mm -hmm. really special outside of her braids. But when you compare her to Tiana, when you compare her to Moana, when you compare her to Mulan, there are very distinctive looks that those faces are given, and they're not given to Asha. I, I, I would agree with you. And this is, I, I mean, if we're even talking like DreamWorks in the, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, you think about like Fiona. Fiona has a more distinct and iconic look than this. And, and in mm -hmm. some ways, sorry, the human form of uh, Fiona it even has a more uh, distinct design than what they've done with Asha, other than the braids, which uh, you, you, you have to do more than that. Uh, so, uh, Alan, I could I could talk with you for hours for as long as you want to talk on this. There, there is one thing that I I wanted to uh, get, and you kind of referenced this uh, before. That is the Easter eggs in this movie. Uh, lastly, wish focused too much on the audience's quote unquote love of Easter eggs. This to me, this whole thing here says that they were making this for YouTube. Speaking of Easter eggs, Jennifer Lee leaned too heavily into an audience's desire to hunt for Easter eggs. Uh, versus telling a good Disney classic story. An insider reached out to me regarding Wish's Easter egg. This source attended several audience test screenings of Wish, the first in February of 2023. In the first screening, 5% of Wish was fully animated and 85% being storyboard animatics. Much of the criticism from the audience spoke to confusion with the overall story and character motivations. It was perceived that the moderator wasn't looking for story feedback, but was more interested in whether they all saw whether <laughs> they all saw the Easter eggs. I, uh, <laughs> I, I would say that that is missing the flowers. Uh, sorry, the forest for the trees mm -hmm. uh, there. They're saying a, a month later, another test screening conducted uh, though more of the film had been animated. None of the story feedback from the first section session had been incorporated into this version. This particular screening was catered explicitly to Disney adults who said they visit Disneyland several times a year. The moderator kept probing into how many Disney references they caught. They caught five. And and this is the entire film, and it happens to have uh, just a certain portion animated. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, there, there's a comment in here about uh, Asha's dress. I would just rather ask you, Alan, in particular, <laughs> what what is the Easter egg for, for Asha's dress? Okay. And how obscure is it? Okay, so because I'm sure you caught this when when you saw Wish, uh, but um, oh yes, yes, this so, was my so, primary focus as I was struggling to pay attention to this film. Yeah, so uh, Asha is clearly the fairy godmother, or will be the fairy godmother, and in Cinderella, mm -hmm. the fairy godmother turns a pumpkin into a carriage. Uh, you know, you know the story. So what they decided to do was they took pumpkin seeds. And they put it in her dress. You could probably see it there. Uh, you know, it's kind of part of the <laughs> accent of the dress. And and if you look closely, um, Asha is wearing an anklet made of pumpkin seeds. I, you know, I changed my mind about this entire film with just that detail <laughs> right now. That is, I'm so I mean, glad that they spent time right? on that. <laughs> the the friends, oh her friends are supposed to be the seven dwarves, you know. Yeah. They they make overt references to films like Bambi, Peter Pan throughout this whole thing, even using animation from those films. Yeah. It is I, I mean, it, it and it's supposed to be an homage to the hundred years of animation, but they're mm -hmm. put in almost like a uh, you know these these toys plucked from these vaults and used for their you know depraved marionette show. I mean, it's it is a complete uh there there's some language i want to use but i, I won't uh it is <laughs> defilement you. of of the vault uh that was so lovingly um created by walt disney himself yeah yeah uh, and, and that being said uh, i do believe that asha's father is supposed to be some representation of walt disney himself as well if i'm is is, is that a crazy uh, take here i've, I've heard I don't that think anyone places i don't think anyone said that but um, from what we were told, like from the like one of the early ideas of Wish was that it is basically the story, the the origin of When You Wish Upon a Star, and that it was sung by an old man, uh, and I think that's what that is, that old man, and that old man was originally cast to be uh, Kelsey Grammer. Okay. I'm sorry, my mind is blown. Yeah, uh, right there. Uh, <laughs> Can you tell us why this didn't include one of the most amazing voices out there? <laughs> well, let's say that that idea 
was there when Lasseter, John Lasseter was still at Disney. Ah, uh, uh, that makes sense. Okay, okay. Because I get it. I, get I know. It. Okay. From what I was told, work had been started kind of in that direction. I think when okay. last year well, I mean, I mean, the Snow Queen started when Walt Disney was still there, and that mm -hmm. eventually, in some ways, became Frozen. So yep. uh, that that's that 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 you know tracks with uh, Disney history in some way. Wow, that is that is incredibly disappointing to hear that we could have had uh, Kelsey Grammer back at the Walt Disney Animation Studios. He's got a great voice. Yeah, uh, love that guy. All right, uh, Alan, uh, I don't think we read every single piece of the article. That was my intention here to yeah. uh, at least meet on the for people who still wanted to go and and learn more about this process because there are i'm going to say some juicy details that we left out of this mm -hmm. video uh but that being said thank you so much for being here guys uh go check out film threat uh chris gore and alan ing are doing the lord's work over there uh talking about uh disney and what has happened to this company also uh the wga exposés that chris has been authoring over there and there's been some anonymous uh work as well that uh, you just really need to to you need to be informed so you know what is going on in Hollywood right now and the the pushback that uh, I think we're all interested in seeing. You can be a part of that by uh, going and checking out filmthreat.com. I'm going to link it below. Alan, is there anything else that uh, I'm I'm missing there that you'd like to add? <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll just say that uh, when I was at uh, when I went to see Monkey Man last night, um, saw the trailer for The Wild Robot. And, uh, and I will tell you oh that uh, from what I saw the wild robot, uh, I believe the intentions were the same in the sense of creating a 2D animated film uh, with, a, with 3D technology. And that trailer blew me away in terms of the art, the art style. And, you know, yeah, you have to say, I think DreamWorks uh, has a better vision of the future of animation than Disney does. It's, well, well, of course, I and you you brought up the wild robot, so I have to say that is directed by Chris Sanders, Disney oh. legend Chris Sanders, uh, who is in charge of Lilo and Stitch. He also did uh, How to Train Your yeah. Dragon, which is referenced in the article, guys. You need to go check out that article. Uh, Chris Sanders is is a, an amazing talent, and Disney is lucky that he uh, sticks around to do the voice of Stitch on occasion. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'll be coming back to their animation studio anytime soon. I cannot reveal a source here, but the wild robot, I think we're going to be talking about that one for a long, mm -hmm. long time. Vash, do you have something to add there? Yes. Uh, I think it's it, all this, the, all of what we've, uh, have been hearing f for this entire show have been endemic of like uh, alan mentioned before jennifer lee it's like it's it, she's not necessarily capable to run a studio right she might be a capable writer she might be a capable producer or even a director but you know running a studio is a different thing we've, we've and we've heard that before with other studios pete doctor for example might be a great director can you run pixar kathleen kennedy might be a great producer but can uh they run uh, a Lucasfilm, you know, and we've seen this throughout. But when you have a company like DreamWorks or or Illumination, where they have a clear vision and they have they have you know great talent, they can put in uh, various roles effectively, you know, and you have uh, you know heads running those uh, various studios effectively. Well, the product uh, speaks for itself. So I I I, I am so uh, happy. Alan, to get your to get your take on this and to to have these D files uh, for the world to see and for this uh, very um, hi these historic pieces that will be used uh, going forward. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. For oh, sorry, go please go ahead. Oh no, no, I'm just saying thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, well, thank you again, Alan, and uh, to our audience, thank you for sticking around this far into the video. Like this video if you like this video. Drop a comment if you have something to say here. I'm not going to try to prompt any of you on this because there's been 34 minutes of things that if I was in the comment section, I would have lots to say. And of course, consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media account.